You know, something doesn't feel right. You know, we got Sunday night football going on over here. The Cowboys and the Eagles. The Cowboys just scored. Kobe Bryant just passed Michael Jordan on the all-time scoring list. But no, we're not going to talk about that. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw. It's not Raw. TLC. That's a thing? What's going on you guys? It is Perry the Entertainer back again for another video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at WWE TLC tables, ladders, chairs, and in this case stairs. And we're going to be taking a look at the event and analyze it in only a way that I can. Make sure you go down there and hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. Please leave your comments down in the comment section below. And don't be a stranger. Follow me on Twitter at the PTE Show so that we can live chat during Raw, SmackDown, and other pay-per-view events in 2015. Because this is our last, uh, this is our last pay-per-view review of the year. So, uh, yeah, this is, you know, it's a long time coming, I guess. But uh, we're gonna kick things off with the way that the uh, the pre-show kicked off. It was a New Day versus Gold and Stardust. I forgot to I forgot to even preview this match. But um, I didn't even get to watch a whole lot of it. I kind of saw the end. I saw Big E and Kofi hit their big finisher on, on Goldust and Stardust. Basically a way to kind of try and get them over and plus give them some spotlight on a, uh, on, on, you know, a pay-per-view or something. So that's pretty much all you really need to know about that if you watch the pre-show. Um, started off pretty damn good note. The Intercontinental Championship on the line. Dolph Ziggler versus the Chain Luke Harper. When I say that this match opened, or this match opened the show up, to a wider, what am I trying to say? A wider expectation type of thing. That's exactly what these two did. They put their damn bodies on the line. So many damn good spots. Honestly, it, it's a match that I recommend. I mean, of course, was it as good as my personal match of the year, Sami Zayn and Adrian? Ne well, not my personal. I'm pretty sure the entire IWC's uh, match of the year, Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville. Absolutely not. But you know, the weapons really kind of made this match. Um, more effective. Hell, there was blood on both guys. It looked like there was a spot where it looked like Luke Harper seriously broke his damn arm. It was so damn good. And Ziggler and Harper, honestly, the fact that Dolph Ziggler wins actually does not upset me as it should. I mean, of course it should because, oh, you just, oh, you just crowned Harper and he's the, he was IC champion. He was such a dominant one. Why are we complaining? We're going to get another match out of these two sometime down the road. I'm not complaining. Yes, Dolph Ziggler wins in a little over, a little under 17 minutes. A damn good match. If you have the network, I suggest you watch. Ju I mean, just this match if you want to. I mean, there's a couple, uh, two or three other matches on here that I definitely recommend you guys go check out. But this was the one match that had a very good you know, beginning, middle, and end. It told a story, and that's exactly what both guys are very good at doing. Uh, let's match up. The tag team championships are on the line. Usos versus Miz and Mizdow. Um, pretty short match here. I mean, the, it was only about seven and a half minutes. Um, the Usos end up getting the victory by disqualification when the Miz attacked, I think, both of them with slammies. Uh, the fact that Miz wasn't even over in his own hometown really says a lot and it really says a lot as to what WWE is doing with Miz and hell they wanted Miz down more than Miz for fuck's sake and Miz lives there for God so you know um nothing really too exciting coming out of this match it was pretty much a, a same old same old Usos match um I figured that maybe this was going to try and set up some sort of split between the Usos or maybe some sort of uh, tension between them therefore they can bring the ascension up and there was no even talk about that on tonight so uh you know you know if you're a ta if if, this, if you had a tag team match at this show you're either on the pre-show or you just kind of got you kind of got the shorter end of the stick because you got you got right after a damn good intercontinental title match so i don't really feel bad for him but i was i should have been expecting a little more but that's what you get when you got the Usos and uh, Miz and Miz Dow. Um, Steel Stairs match, Eric Rowan versus The Big Show. Big Show wins in like about 10 minutes. The match was boring. Um, I didn't like the ending. I didn't like the finish with uh, Big Show pretty much making Rowan his bitch, knocking him out, and uh, 
putting steel steps over his torso to uh, cover him, even though pretty much to break a, break a cover, all you have to do is lift your shoulder off the mat, right? But apparently, you know, putting steel steps, I hated that too. They tried selling us on the damn stairs. They said the stairs were like 280 something pounds and the top part is like 80 something pounds and and the bottom is like 188 something. They're like, there's no fucking way that the top of those damn stairs are more than my fucking dog and I fucking combined, for fuck's sake. Um, and the fact that these two are just swinging them around like goddamn ragdolls, it's like, I understand these guys are huge and everything, but like, why, they shouldn't be swinging these things around. And granted, apparently these, these steel steps are 300 pounds, right? And for some reason, they're they're swinging around. What did Cole say? Like a piece of paper? Fuck, they pretty much were paper, for God's sake. But uh, yeah, Big Show wins, and nothing good comes out of this match. It made Rowan look really bad. So I don't know. I'm not. I mean, anything that I kind of had for Rowan's kind of dead now. I hope that WWE does something to kind of re reinvent him, or you know, do something with him. And get him relevant again because this match just just killed any sort of momentum that Rowan really had. Um, surprisingly, our next match was the tables match. Uh, John Cena's number one contendership is on the line. John Cena versus Seth Rollins. We all thought this was going to be the main event, but it was like right in the middle. And honestly, this was a pretty damn good match. Uh, Cena and Rollins pretty much lit it up. Um, like I I said on Twitter that this was this entire show was pretty much Spot Fest 2014, and that's pretty much what it is because hell. A lot of these matches actually relied on weapons, so, you know, it, it, you would really think that besides maybe Harper and, and Ziggler, who will who can have a good match without weapons, you know, really gets you wondering what exactly could these two have done without uh, the table stipulation, or, or maybe Rowan and Big Show without the stupid stairs stipulation that had absolutely no deal with the damn match whatsoever, but, um, like I said, Cena and Rollins did a pretty damn good match, uh, pretty damn good um, yeah, they did a pretty damn good match is what I was pretty much trying to say. Um, basically, I think Cena sent Rollins through a table. The referee was knocked out somehow. I don't remember. I was getting my food, so I didn't see that part. Uh, Cena sent Rollins through a table. Uh, J&J security started beating up on Cena, disposed of the evidence, all that stuff. Even though apparently nobody, A, nobody's watching backstage and B, even when the freaking referee got out of the ring, or when he got back into the ring and he regained consciousness, he couldn't see a broken table. <laughs> like, okay, someone went through it. One of you two bastards went through a damn table, and I want to know who you did, but apparently nobody's watching the match backstage, so that's a thing. Um, you know, they're all beating the crap out of Cena. Uh, they go to try and do their Shield 2.0 triple powerbomb thing, but Cena fights out of it. And, um... Basically, Cena's just, you know, doing his thing and everything. Big Show walks out there for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Uh, Big Show attacks Cena. He's attacking Cena. Goes for a choke slam, but we get the sudden return of Roman Reigns to active competition this time. Not just to, you know, accept a slammy or to, uh, you know, update us on his condition. No, he's back and in fucking business, bro. He ran over, he walked, you know, jumped over the barricade, got into the ring speared the shit out of the big show through us through the table um what did he do? then he uh i think he yeah he's superman i think it was he superman punched rollins and i think he speared big show i might have had that backwards um but then uh knocked rollins out cena hits an fu through uh on rollins through a table so cena wins in about 20 minutes all in all pretty damn good match uh Cena is now going to get his match. They even said Brock Lesnar is going to be at the Royal Rumble. So, um, Brock Lesnar versus John Cena Part 4 is going to be at the Royal Rumble 215, which will be the next time I eat uh, for a pay-per-view review on Sundays. Um, like I said, damn good match here. I um, really think that the table stipulation actually kind of brought this match together. And the, f the fact Roman Reigns is back is... Well, pretty damn good in itself, I think. I mean, granted, I was expecting someone like Orton, you know, to kind of, okay, you know that Brock is going to be back on TV. Seth Rollins is going to need something to do. So why don't we give Seth Rollins Randy Orton? But they decided to go with Roman Reigns. So more power to him. 
Uh, Divas Championship, AJ Lee versus Nikki. Honest to God, I was not excited for this match. Even when the fucking bell rang, I lost interest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe you guys felt differently about it. I thought it was just a goddamn hot mess for fuck's sake. That's, that's probably the best way I could describe this match. It was boring as hell. And it, half the match wasn't even Nikki's fault was the reason why it's boring. Hint, hint. Um... Nikki ends up getting the win with, I guess, Bree sprayed her in the face with some fucking mace or something. I don't know. I didn't see that. Uh, Nikki gets the win in like seven minutes, so. Nikki wins. Uh, Roman Reigns tried to cut a promo last, or, uh, but after the match. Keyword, I said tried. Um, he basically was like, oh, Roman Reigns is back, and he's declaring, yes, declaring himself to, uh, that he'll win the Royal Rumble. And I say that. I, I emphasize the word declaring is because that was what fucked the entire promo up for me. I was feeling, I'm like, yeah, Roman, you're back and everything. And then he stumbled on the word declares. And I looked at it and I was like, how are we supposed to take you seriously when you can't even fluently talk? Like, <laughs> I'm trying so hard to sell myself on Roman Reigns and it's just, it's not working. It's not working. And he needs to do something with his mic skills. Maybe he's got... You know, he's got this acting guy now that he's getting acting lessons from and everything. And that's that's cool. That's cool. I'm glad. More power to you. But <laughs> someone needs to teach you how to talk. And hell, if you're a fucking cousin with The Rock or you're related to The Rock, you better know how to fucking talk for God. But um, chairs match up next. Kane versus Ryback. Another kind of bore fest here. Ryback wins in about 10 minutes. That's pretty much all you need to know. Basically, the match was used to get more uh, momentum on Ryback's side for being the first guy or on Team Cena to get eliminated, especially after all the uh, momentum he was supposed to go into the damn uh, Survivor Series match. He lost all of it by being the first guy eliminated from Team Cena, and I guess this is WWE's way of saying, hey, we're serious on Ryback, so we're, we're going to have him beat a meaningless character who's just floating around and does absolutely nothing on TV. And we're supposed to like him again, so that's 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 a thing. So, you're a Ryback fan? You won. Uh, U.S. title match, Rusev versus Jack Swagger. Another boar fest here. Three boar fests in a row. Damn, we better have a damn good main event in Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose. And that's exactly what we got. But we will uh, get to that in just a second. Rusev does the same damn thing he made uh, Swagger do. I think it was at Payback or Battleground or something. Basically, made him just pass out. And that was all you needed to know. Uh, another filler match, probably more filler, so that Bray and Ambrose couldn't take up a whole lot of time, and probably just to key, uh, give some face time and, and uh, time to Rusev. So that's a thing. It seems like that's a catchphrase on this uh, on this episode, isn't it? Uh, final match of the night. Surprisingly, this is actually the uh, the big main event, the big coup de gras. A uh, TLC match between Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose, and this match was pretty damn good. Uh, they they did rely a little too much on the weapons, which I will... I'm not going to take away because it is a TLC match. You know, it's no DQ. You're supposed to use the weapons. So I'm not going to take that away, the fact that they kind of relied on weapons a little too much, especially Dean Ambrose. Uh, I think he jumped off... He jumped off a ladder like four times. Or he's jumped off so much shit just off this thing. Like, he jumped off the, the pre-show panel match thing... Uh, he jumped on a on a barricade or jumped on top of Bray Wyatt. He jumped off a, a a ladder or a small ladder through a table onto Bray Wyatt. Then he got a medium sized ladder and did the same damn thing. And then towards the end of the match, he got this big gigantic motherfucking ladder like like the one that Michaels had at WrestleMania 22 when he jumped on Mr. McMahon and <clears throat> cleared off the Spanish announce table because of course you know the Spanish announce table can't last forever. So you put Bray Wyatt on there. Dean Ambrose climbs this big, ginormous ladder and jumps off Bray Wyatt. Holy shit moments. Q, holy shit chance. A lot of weapons used in this match. A lot of brutality. A lot of physicality, basically, what I'm trying to say. And that's why I think this match is very good. Um, you know, they didn't really tell a story, you know, speaking-wise to kind of, you know promote this feud and promote this match at all but i was still interested in the match i mean there were a couple times where i was zoning out i mean like i said in the intro we have a football game going on so i was kind of zoning out a little bit which i'm not going to take away from wwe because this is kind of a very irrelevant pay-per-view you know now everyone's kind of looking forward to the rumble and 
you know, WrestleMania only in a couple months, so no one's really paying attention to this. And, uh, yeah, <clears throat> the finish, excuse me, hold on, <clears throat> the finish to this match left me in either it was confusion at first, and then it was just plain like, are you fucking serious? Um, <clears throat> I guess Ambrose throws Wyatt, this is after he jumps on top of the, uh, uh, the Spanish announce table. He throws Wyatt into the ring, he grabs his TV monitor, I guess, that he was looking at sometime during the match, and he got that big idea for jumping on the damn thing in the first place. Uh, he was going to hit Bray Wyatt with it, it looked like, and it was connected to something. Uh, I don't know if it was down below the ring or if it was something, and Ambrose apparently didn't realize that, so he went to go hit it anyway, and somehow, for some reason, apparently if you pull a cord out of a TV like really, really, really fast, it explodes, and I might try that. Uh, maybe with like a flat screen, not with my big fucking dinosaur thing over here, but, um, you know, apparently you pull it and it's a big fucking spark, like a big fireworks thing comes out and it's like, it looked like seriously a bad pyro job, but, um, after that Bray Wyatt kind of got in the, you know, took advantage of it, hit Sister Abigail with it and cover one, two, three, Bray Wyatt gets the win, but, I can't say, well, he did look weak because he was on the receiving end of a lot of spots, uh, jumping spots basically by Dean Ambrose. So I can say that he did look a little weak in this match, but I guess we're supposed, like, again, with Ryback, I guess we're supposed to take him seriously because he got the win right. But, um, I did not like the end to this, and I felt that <clears throat> if this was not the main event, what would be what was the point in putting that as the main event and then have and then to make matters worse absolutely nothing happened afterwards after that he kind of yelled at ambrose doctors and medical staff were checking at ambrose and that was it like now the pre sh the post show is going on right now and <clears throat> nothing nothing's going on no no appearance from randy orton or or sting or the undertaker apparently undertaker was a big rumor that he was he's supposed to be going into a feud with uh, bray wyatt i guess that's a big that's a big rumor now no appearances from any of these guys you just end it with bray wyatt i guess you know towering over over dean ambrose who looks strong in the entire damn match so um yeah that's that um as for the entire pay-per-view i feel that it was kind of very sloppy at some points um best match of the night it's a toss-up between harper and ziggler and john cena yes john cena in a match of the night uh and seth rollins i think um worst match of the night <laughs> shit um there's a couple of them <laughs> i think i think we're gonna crown this one eric rowan big show i think what do you guys think about that maybe with a with like second place with the silver medal going to um Ryback Kane, and then the bronze will go to AJ and Nikki. How about that? Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Please uh, leave your thoughts and everything down in the comment section below. Also, let me know if you guys like this little beats thing, because, you know, I kind of threw this together at my my uh, my preview video, and I didn't know if you guys liked it, because you guys weren't commenting, so I don't know if you guys enjoyed that. If you didn't, if you didn't, more it, it makes things easier for me, because it'll be a smaller file size, but if you guys like it, uh, I'll download some more, and I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll throw them to the background of this. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. I am out. Till next time, Perry the Entertainer signing out. Peace. Um, Raw review tomorrow, and we I might upload the bonus episode to uh, hashtag spoilers as well. I told you guys earlier I was going to be uh, uploading uh, the Tribute to the Troop spoilers. So, And apparently that's going to be happening like Thursday or something like that, so I need to upload that quick. So... Be on the lookout for a bonus episode of Hashtag Spoilers coming soon. Peace. Thank you guys for watching.